that's me, Betty Olson, behind that sea of paper. I'm the secretary here in the chemistry department at the university. Yes, that's me, all right. A year ago, just beginning my second month on the job. You probably feel much the same way I do about being a secretary in a university department. It's different from other office jobs in a lot of ways. Mostly, I guess, because you work for so many bosses here. In my case, my main work, naturally, is for the department head, Dr. Smith. But there are half a dozen other men in the department who've got work for me to do. Typing, filing, dictation, and heaven knows what other projects they're likely to come up with. And it's my job to keep them all happy. All this, plus, answer the phone, meet office callers, handle university business forms, not to mention keeping the departmental budget records. That's enough to keep any gal busy. In those first few weeks, it was more than enough for me. The top of my desk was one big pile of unfinished business. But that was a year ago. There's a big difference in the way my desk looks today, and just as big a difference in the way I handle my job. When you compare the way I work today to the way I worked a year ago, my, my job hardly looks the same. You'll see for yourself. Hello? No, he isn't in yet. Just a minute and I'll take that down. Say, would you mind repeating that number, please? I didn't have a pencil before. Uh-huh. I've got it. I'll see that he gets the message. Bye-bye. Pardon me. Could you tell me if this is the right way to teach him out of German? Well, let's see. I don't know. I'll check here. Can't seem to find the right book. Well, I don't know. I guess I can't help you much. You'll just have to try over in admissions and records. That's someplace in the administration building, I think. Thanks. I wonder how many copies of this memo Dr. Conklin wanted. Morning, Betty. Oh, good morning, Dr. Smith. Say, do you happen to know how many copies of this memo Dr. Compton wanted? Well, what memo is this? It's the one on last week's committee meeting. Didn't he say how many copies he wanted? I can't remember if he did or not. Well, Dr. Conklin won't be back until four this afternoon. Well, type four. That ought to be enough. Oh, by the way, um, were there any calls for me this morning? Oh, yes, there was, Dr. Smith. I made a note on it here somewhere. Hello. No, you've got the wrong number. Well, I'm going into my office, Betty. When you find the message, bring it in to me, will you please? Okay, Dr. Smith. Betty, uh, do you think you could type up this bibliography for me right away? It'll only be a page. Well, Mr. Adams, I've got this bibliography for Dr. Conklin to do. But this will only make one page. It shouldn't take so long. Well, okay. I guess I really haven't got any use in mornings like this, I know. One thing after another. I couldn't get started with anything. All I could see was that big pile of work on my desk growing. You can imagine how I felt about it. But thank heavens, this was a year ago. I think I've got things pretty well in hand today. I take a few minutes first thing every morning to do my regular office housekeeping. I dust Dr. Smith's desk. And give mine a once over too. My 
my typewriter gets a good cleaning, and I'm ready to go. But not before I check my calendar to see what I've got lined up for the day. Dr. Smith's a stickler for getting travel reports and things like that out on time, so I try to dig into those jobs right away. He happens to be teaching a first-hour class this quarter. I've usually taken a call or two for him by the time he comes into his office. Good morning, Dr. Smith. Good morning, Betty. How are you today? Oh, just fine. Dr. Cameron called this morning. Oh, yes. Thank you. Now, Betty, uh, here's the information on these lab benches that we're to buy. Will you process these on the forms you use for the purchasing department and get that done as quickly as you can? And uh, here's some more typing that needs to be done. Uh, another research report. It's research report. How would you like it, Dr. Smith? Oh, work it in with your other stuff sometime. <laughs> There's no real rush for it. I see. Well, how would the first of next week be, say, Monday? Monday? Um, that's fine. And how many copies do you want? Oh, I think three should be enough. Three, an original on bond and two on onion skin? Yes, mm hmm. Single or double space? Well, you better make it double. And what about margins? Oh, the way it is on the draft is about right. No, you better, better make the left margin a half inch wider, and then we can bind it in the research folder if we have to. Thank you. offices around this campus this morning trying to find out about graduate work in engineering but nobody seems to know anything around here i see graduate work in engineering you say that's right have you ever had any graduate work before either here at this university or at some other school no i just got my bs in engineering at illinois i see have you been admitted to the graduate school admitted i can't even find the right place to apply around here you want to do that in room 316 in johnston i'll just write that down for you Johnson is directly across the mall from the administration building. I can show you on this campus map here. Oh, I see. It's right next to Northwest Auditorium there. That's right. And while you're there, it might be wise for you to ask them to suggest the proper advisor for you. Yes, I'll do that. Thanks very much. I'm really getting some service around here at last. You're welcome. the secretary in the chemistry department. I'd like to place an order for supplies. The department number is 3002, and the budget is 2100. Yes. Six reams of canary yellow second sheets, four boxes of paper clips size number one, six boxes of number two writing pencils, three boxes of eight pound carbon paper. Yes, eight pound, that's right. And would you deliver those, please, to room 162 Chemistry Building? Thank you. Goodbye. Morning, Betty. Say, do you think you could take a little dictation? I'd like to get this correspondence out of the way. It's not very much. Well, I do have seven other things I promised to have for staff members this morning, Dr. Thompson. Would sometime this afternoon be just as convenient for you? Sure, that'd be all right. What time would be best for you? How about three o'clock? Fine, I'll mark it down. By the way, Dr. Conklin, if I can have your weekly quiz by tomorrow, you'll give me time to... I suppose I could have dropped everything and taken Dr. Conklin's dictation right then and there. As a matter of fact, 
I would have if he'd insisted. Urgent dictation always gets top priority. But this time, by scheduling him later in the day, I was able to keep my other bosses happy, too. As I look back, I can see how I used to cause half my own problems by not scheduling my work. Have you uh, found anything on that phone message yet, Betty? Oh, yes, I have, Dr. Smith. It's right here. I'm sorry I forgot about it, but Mr. Adams had a rush job. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look too important. There's some work to be taken care of here. We've got uh, two new assistants, research assistants, starting tomorrow. See if you can get them on the payroll as soon as possible. Here's a manuscript that uh, I'd like to type for the physical chemistry journal. And here's some stuff that can go back in the files. Is that clear? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Everything's clear, I said. Here's another way I cause problems for myself. I used to feel Dr. Smith and the other men would think I was stupid if I asked questions about the work they gave me. It took me a long time to see that sometimes the only way I could get assignments straight was to ask questions and listen carefully, especially if they gave me three or four things at once. Hi, Betty. Say, I need your help. I've got a real problem here, a survey questionnaire, and I need a thousand copies as soon as possible. A thousand copies? I don't know how I can do that. I don't think you can get that many by ditto or mimeograph. Well, there must be some other way. I need a thousand copies, and soon. Not that I know of. A thousand is a lot of copies, Mr. Fenwick. Well, look, well, can't we get this thing done by ditto? You just type up as many ditto masters as we need to get a thousand copies. Mm, I don't know. I suppose so. I never heard of doing anything like this before. But if you want a thousand copies... Good. And that's the way we'll do it, then. I shudder now when I think of how Mr. Fenwick and I decided to do that big duplicating job by ditto. You can imagine the extra work it meant for me. When Mr. Fenwick comes in with one of his rush projects like this today, I save myself a lot of problems since I've learned the right mimeograph stencil or multilith master to use. To top it off, I was down to my last ditto master. So before I could even get started with Mr. Fenwick's job, I had to order some masters from the storehouse. I don't think I was one of their favorite customers. I want to order some ditto masters. Mm, I don't know how do they come. Well, let me think. A thousand copies. No, no, not a thousand ditto masters. I was just figuring here. Fifty in a box, you say? Well, better send me two boxes. No, better make it three just in case. What? The department? Chemistry. Don't you know the budget number is there? It's 3002-2100. Oh, and see, just a minute, I forgot. Better send some ditto paper, too. Two wings. I'd forgotten all about it, but I needed half a dozen other things from the storehouse, too. Of course, the shape my supply cabinet was in didn't help matters any. I used to feel that these things weren't too important, so many times I wasn't sure of what I needed until I ran out of it in the middle of a job. But after a few experiences like Mr. Fenwick's project, I sure changed my mind. these requisitions, Dr. Smith. I can get them into the campus mail for today's pickup. Fine. Oh. By the 
Well, Betty, would you uh, check on the present figure in our supply budget balance? Looks like we're going to have to figure things kind of close between now and the end of the year. Yes, I will, Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith, I have the supply budget figure you asked for. Do you want to take it down? Yes, buddy, go ahead. It's four hundred and sixty nine dollars and twenty cents. Thank you. wondering if this place where they test rocks. I found a few and I thought it might be a real value. Well, no, sir, we don't test rocks here in this department, but I think they do something like that over in geology. Would you care to wait a moment while I check on that for you? It was also one of the things I like most about my job is meeting the people who come into the office for help. I used to hate to stop everything to talk to them, especially if I was trying to get out a rushed job. But I found that by keeping my information sources, like address books, bulletins, and manuals, right at my fingertips, I can handle visitors easily and quickly and enjoy doing it. Actually, I found it pays to keep all important information right up to date and handy. Pick our departmental budget records. About this time a year ago, Dr. Smith was planning to buy some new equipment, and he needed the latest supply budget balance. I wonder if you could get me the uh, present balance on our supply budget. There are several items we want to buy in the next couple of weeks, and I'd like to know where we stand. Mm -hmm. I can get it for you right away, Dr. Smith. There are a few items here I haven't had time to post yet, but I can figure the balance in just a second. They're adding these vouchers, this one here, packing the first from the second, looks like there's about $855 in the supply budget. Hmm, I see. Thank you very much, buddy. Perhaps I'd better go over these figures just to, just to make sure. May I take this material into the office with me? I think my balance is pretty close. I'm sure it is, Benny. Thank you. Your memo? Oh, that's right. Well, I'll tell you, Dr. Conklin, I've been so busy and there have been so many interruptions, I just haven't had time to do a thing on it. You haven't? I've got to have that thing by tomorrow morning. Can't you get going on it right now? 
Well, I've got a bibliography for Mr. Adams and the typewriter right now. But as soon as I finish that, I can start on your memo. Good. It'll be my nick if I don't have it tomorrow. Oh, say, before I forget it, could I have the results of the ONR project Dr. Smith finished last year? I think so. I'll look. It's supposed to be. I don't know where it could be. Well, somebody around here must have it. I'll see if Adams has it. It just happened that Mr. Adams did have the research report that Dr. Conklin wanted. But I felt awfully foolish about not knowing where it was. I guess filing is the easiest part of a secretary's job to let slide. I did, and it caught up with me. So I decided that before anybody said anything, I'd give those files a house cleaning. Paid off, too. Dr. Smith, I'm going now to take some dictation from Dr. Conklin. I'll be out of the office about half an hour. Shall I leave your door open so you can hear the phone? Yes, Betty, if you would, please. Hello, Dr. Coleman. Hello, Betty. I'd like to get the correspondence that we've had with Professor Derbeck of Michigan State. It's all in the files, I'm sure, Dr. Coleman. I'd like to take this to my office and look at it. Will that be all right? Certainly. I'll find it out, too. I won't keep it very long. Good afternoon. May I help you? Well, I was outside looking at the bulletin board, and it says there that Chem 2 isn't going to be offered next quarter. That's right. Well, I'm already signed up for it. What do I do now? Would you excuse me a minute while I answer the phone? Chemistry Department, Miss Olson speaking. I think perhaps you have the wrong number. There is no Professor Green in this department. Are you calling from off campus? You are. If you'd care to hold the line just a moment, I'll check his number in the staff directory and have the operator transfer your call. Hello? Thank you for waiting. Professor George Green is in the sociology department. His extension is 8031. Yes, 8031. I'll have the operator transfer your call now. Operator, would you transfer the call on 649 to 8031, please? Thank you. Thank you for waiting. You were saying that you were signed up for Chemistry 2 and that it's not being offered next quarter. Is that right? That's right. What do I do now? I have some special instructions on that right here. Let me see. Here we are. It says you can sign up for Chemistry 3A without prerequisites if you wish. I can? That's right. It's being offered in place of Chemistry 2 and at the same hour. Well, that sounds good. I think I'll do that. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Whenever I leave the office, I try to make sure someone will answer the phone while I'm gone. For a few minutes there, it didn't look as though I was going to get away to take Dr. Conklin's dictation. You see what I mean about variety on this job. Dr. Froman comes in, a student needs help, the phone rings. That's what makes the work so interesting. Keeping information sources handy, as I mentioned earlier, helps me handle everything without getting upset. Before I learned to organize my work, though, even a simple everyday task like taking dictation would sometimes throw me.
Benny? Yes? Uh, would you come in, please, and take a short letter? Bring in the appointment documents for the new research assistants. I'll sign them, and we can get them into campus mail tonight. Okay. Gosh, I forgot all about them. Dr. Smith, I'm sorry. I don't have the appointment forms typed as yet. There's been so much to do. Betty, we've got to get those men on the payroll. Well, since you're here, um, do you want to take this letter? Now, this thing will be transcribed till tomorrow, but be sure to get those appointments out today. I seem to have forgotten my pencil, Dr. Smith. Do you have one I could borrow? Yeah, here, take this one. Thank you. Now, this is a letter going to Professor Herman Lander. California Institute of Technology. Copies of the results as soon as they are available. Yours very truly. I'll send a copy to Dr. Conklin and Mr. Grafton. Okay, Dr. Smith. job those first few months. I tried to get everything out on time, but this wasn't the first evening I had to stay late to finish a job. I really used to feel for myself on days like this. But handling a number of different duties at once was a new experience for me, and I just couldn't seem to get anything done. But I've learned a lot since then. Today, of course, things are different. Betty, I have to leave a few minutes early tonight, so I thought I'd drop by and sign those letters on the way out. They're both right here, Dr. Conklin. All right, now I'll scribble my John Henry on them. Thanks so much, Betty. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Dr. I think you can see now why we secretaries are such key people in university departments. At least, I feel we are. Nearly everyone in the department depends on us for important help. So do the students who come in with their problems. And I sometimes feel that the public that comes to the university for help would be lost without us. I feel I've learned a lot in the past year. Things that make my job and satisfying, too. I wouldn't like it any other way. Oh, I know I've mentioned a lot of things that used to bother me on the job. I'm sure you saw many more as you watched me work. But now that I've learned to handle them and organize my work, things run pretty smoothly. I suppose it's like this on most new jobs. Well, I think we universities run into a lot of the same problems I had. Maybe it'll help you to think back over the way I tried to work them out. Compare the way I worked those first few weeks with the way I do now. See what you think the difference is. 